carried along with tradition as times went on. And that's one of the reasons why I want to study this tonight. Tonight, we're going to take a break from actually the story of Jonah. We'll finish up on the fourth chapter of Jonah next week. Now, I'd like for to have you mention, if we could, just a little while as we study this uh, portion because uh, I feel like most of you want to learn, pay attention. So let's have a little bit of moving around, talking as, as possible. That's why we study the Word of the Lord. Now, in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And we're, going to stu- we're going to title our study tonight, Three Days and Three Nights. Uh, we want to finish up now the fourth chapter of the book of Jonah. So what you can do is make, if you take any notes tonight, keep these separate from your study of Jonah. Keep them where you can uh, uh, remember them, go back to them. But I, w- I don't know if I put them in between the third and fourth chapter of the book of Jonah because really we're not even going to be talking about Jonah much tonight. We're going to be uh, talking about the Lord Jesus and the crucifixion and uh, mainly how long is three days and three nights and stuff like that. So before we go into any more Scripture, let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Every head bow, every eye closed. Amen. All right. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. And I will still be this reverend after we get through praying. Our Father, we thank You for the privilege of studying Your Word. We ask that You would open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of Thy law. Lord, teach us the truth. Lord, we realize tonight that I guess 90% of the churches in the church world and I, Lord, would believe about opposite to what we're going to teach tonight and believe from Your Word. But, God, we still agree with what You said and we don't claim to know everything, God, but we know You said, let God be true and every man a liar. And I pray, God, that we'll take sides with Your Word on everything that comes up in life. And Lord, by the way, we know we'll come out on the winning side. We ask You, Father, to open our eyes, Lord, and may this study be a blessing. May it be enlightening. May it be an encouragement to each person here, Lord, to study Thy Word and rightly divide the Word of truth. And Lord, You commanded us to study to show ourselves approved unto You, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We know, God, our flesh rebels even against the thought of studying the Word of God. And our flesh cuts up and it says, No, and I don't want to study and it, it's, it's too hard. But, but Lord, we know You commanded us to study. And God, we pray that You would help us, Lord, to ourselves. Be the soldiers of the cross You'd have us to be. Forgive our sin and help us, Lord. Move out anything in our life or the lives of these that would hinder the Holy Spirit from having His will and right away in this service tonight. We'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. All right. The Bible says in Jonah 1.17 that Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Nobody ever had quite an experience like Jonah had. Of all the people that's ever lived and died, nobody ever had an experience like this man Jonah had. But yet this Scripture stood on stood on the holy inspired pages of God's Word for 600 years before anybody even knew what it meant. And 600 years after Jonah had, was done dead and gone, Jesus Christ stood one day and He threw such great light on this Scripture of Jonah 1.17 that the people were amazed. Never before they realized what Jonah's three days and three nights would represent. For he said in Matthew 12, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so sh- or in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, I'd like for you to look at Mac- Matthew chapter 12, and we're going to be turning to a lot of Scripture tonight, so keep your Bibles handy. You may not be able to take many notes because of the way I've got this uh, divided out, but I do want you to... Hold your Bibles, and we'll be spending a lot of time in the Scripture. Matthew chapter 12, and verse 40. And then when you get Matthew chapter 12, and verse 40, hold that place and look at Mark chapter 8. Matthew chapter 12, and verse 40. We'll read these verses as a uh, foundation for what we're going to study tonight. 
Matthew 12, 40, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Mark 8, 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the and scribes and be killed. And after three days, after three days is over with, rise again. I want to use those verses as a foundation. I want to title the first or part of this three days and three nights study tonight, part A, the Good Friday myth. The Good Friday myth. How many of you has heard all your life that Jesus was crucified on Friday? Raise your hand. All right. That is the Good Friday myth. A myth is something that's true. Or pulling your leg, in other words. As we'll see from the Word of God. Tradition has taught for hundreds and hundreds of years that the Lord was crucified on Friday and got up early when the sun rose Sunday morning. Now, this can't be if these three days and three nights are three days and three nights. Now, the way the old rabbis and the people, uh, a lot of the scholars, a lot of the commentaries, and a lot of these people get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday, is they teach that if, if there's just part of a day, then it could stand for a whole day. Which he, like if he was crucified on Friday, he stayed in the, gra- or in the grave Friday part of Friday, all day Saturday, and part of Sunday, which meant three days. But they still can't get three nights out of that because you only have Friday night and Saturday night. So that's one day and a half and part of a night, and or rather, uh, two nights. And the only way they can do that is, you know that little dark spirit period that came when Jesus was dying and it was dark for three hours? They add that little dark spot there as the other night. And say there was one, and then Friday night was two, and then Saturday night was three. And which makes them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But uh, that just don't, it don't add up. And if, if Mark 8.31 said, after three days, and it really does mean three real days like we talk about days, then there's no, it's impossible that the Lord could have died on Friday and been put in the tomb late Friday evening, and come up Sunday morning, and then still spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So what we need to do tonight is check this thing out and find out uh, where the Good Friday myth came from, do a study on the Bible definition of a day and a night, and then we'll tell you when the Lord was really crucified. And that's what we want to do. And we ask you to pray for us that we do this. Very hard subject. Very hard. I know I've read in several books and things and a lot of the... Uh, smart, educated, great men of God that I know uh, don't claim to have all the answers to some of these Scriptures. And they're very confusing if, if you just take them at face value. But I've learned a long time ago that every time it seems like there's a contradiction in the Scripture, there's got to be an explanation for it. It's got to be rightly divided because I've learned that uh, the Scripture is so much smarter than I am or ever will be and if I think I found a contradiction, I've got to remember that thing about 10 million times smarter than I am. And it, probably the fault is with me and not with the Word of God. Where you get in trouble is where you get to think you're so smart that you can find an error in the Bible and you give the real answer and correct it. That's when you're too smart for your own britches. And so tonight uh, we'd like to talk about the Good Friday myth, a tradition that teaches that Jesus was crucified on Friday and rose early Sunday morning. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is that the Jewish day, and these, these, uh, all of these writers and the 
All of the, the customs that were observed this time were going by the Jewish calendar. The Jewish day began at sundown. Now, this is something you're going to have to get in your mind at the very first of this study tonight. The Jewish day began at sundown and lasted 24 hours till the next sundown. Now, turn your Bibles back to Genesis chapter 1. The Lord started this order out the very first. He started it when He first created the world in Genesis chapter 1. He laid down this order, and the Jews always observed it because that's the way God did it at creation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. Well, let's look at verse 3. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. There was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the Lord lays that, that down at the very first of the Bible, that He starts out with the evening. The evening and the morning were the first day. The same thing He does in verse 8, verse 13, verse 19, verse 23. And it was still recognized at the time Jesus was on earth that the Jewish day began at sundown, at 6 o'clock. For example, like this is Wednesday. Alright, now if we were going by the Jewish calendar, the old Jewish... Thursday would have began about an hour and a half ago, or an hour and 45 minutes ago, and right Thursday at... Uh, Thursday would have started at 6 o'clock this afternoon and would last it till 6 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Then tomorrow afternoon, Friday would start at 6.30 or 6 o'clock on Thursday afternoon and go, and go that way. Now, you've got to get that in your mind or you won't understand what the Bible, how He stayed in there three days and three nights. The Jewish day began at sundown. Genesis 1.5. So that made the first day of the week when Jesus rose begin on Saturday evening at 6. Everybody in here knows that Saturday's, I mean, that Sunday's not the Sabbath, don't you? Everybody knows that Saturday is the Sabbath, the seventh day. Sunday's the first day of the week. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. You know, some a lot of people say, Lord, we'll thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning you give us. Now, that's a good sounding prayer, but... Uh, really, that's way, way, way off. Saturday's the Sabbath. If you don't believe you should work on the Sabbath, you should quit working on Saturday. Because Saturday is the Old Testament Jewish Sabbath. And the, the Jewish Sabbath began at Friday evening at 6 o'clock and lasted until Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. And the Orthodox Jews in Palestine today that still observe those feasts, still go by those days uh, when, it's a, when it's their feast days. Friday afternoon at 6 o'clock, the Sabbath starts. It lasts till Saturday afternoon at 6 o'clock. The first day of the week begins Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. Everybody got that? First day of the week begins Saturday at 6 o'clock. Now, the Bible says that Jesus rose on the first day of the week. At the very first of the first day of the week, which made him rise from the dead Saturday evening. <laughs> uh, it's the first day of the week, as we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, I just want to throw that on you right now, and then we're going to prove it from the Bible. All right, now we're getting ready to look, look at a few scriptures. Look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Now, I want you to look at these scriptures real close tonight. And I hope, trust the Lord, will speak to your heart. You say, I don't even see what the big deal about it. What, what difference does it make? What day he died on? Well, if you can make three days out of, three nights out of Friday, Sunday, you can take the thousand years in Revelation and make two months out of it. If it don't really mean three days and three nights, then the thousand years might not really mean thousand years. Seven years might not really mean seven years. And uh, you begin to tire the Bible that way. To go along with tradition. Mark chapter 16. Hold your place there. Luke chapter 24. We're going to go right through the Gospels. Mark, Luke, and John. 
Everybody turn to them. This will help you to get familiar with the Bible while we study and enjoy it all at the same time. John chapter 20. With the other hand there. John chapter 20. Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20. Now keep in mind, the Sabbath began Friday afternoon at 6 o'clock. It ended Saturday afternoon at 6 o'clock. The first day of the week started Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. Mark 16, 2. This is after He rose from the dead and Mary comes to the uh, tomb. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, that Sunday morning, they came under the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. All right, now there's where the sunrise service comes from. They came at the rising of the sun. All right, now you've got to remember that there's more than just one Mary. There's at least four different Marys in the gospel. There at the cross and at the... Uh, there was Mary Magdalene. There was Mary the mother of Jesus. There was Mary the mother of James and John. And Mary the mother of uh, that other, those other guys, Joseph and J-O-S-E-S. But anyway, there's at least four different Marys here. All right, now this Mary Magdalene, the Bible says Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Lomi had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, Mark 16, 2, the first day of the week, they came under the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. All right. Now, you know he's already there. Let's look at Luke. It takes us a little bit earlier. Let's see what happened a little earlier around the tomb that day. Luke 24, verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, <laughs> they got up a little bit earlier, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away. It's done and gone. Stone done rolled away and everything. All right, now... Here it says when they first came to this sepulcher that the stone was already rolled away. But if I remember reading my Bible right, somebody was there when the stone was rolled away. Look at John. Let's go on over to John. John even got up earlier than they did that morning. He didn't just go to sunrise, brother. Let's see where they, these people were. John chapter 20 and verse 1. John chapter 20. And verse 1, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. When it was yet dark. So actually, we see that Mary Magdalene actually got there before it was even daylight. And they were there at the rising of the sun. Well, does everybody see that? While it was yet dark. I mean, it wasn't even daylight. You say, well, it's probably daylight, but the sun wasn't up. Oh, it said it was dark. Jesus is already gone before it even got daylight. He's already gone before it even began to dawn. Before it got light where you could see, while it was yet dark, and the stone taken away. He was gone, long gone. So these scriptures... Which was represent the resurrection. Mark 16. What did I say? Mark 16, 2. Luke 24, 1. John 20, verse Now, if Jesus died at six, uh, the sixth hour, that would be three o'clock in the afternoon. That's the way they calculated time. Jesus died at three o'clock in the afternoon. He was crucified at nine o'clock in the morning, stayed on the cross six hours, and died. He died at three o'clock in the afternoon, and there, uh, which means the following day would start at six o'clock, three hours before that day started. He was buried. 
about right before at six, right at sundown at six o'clock on the day that he died. Now we need to find out the Bible definition of a day. The Jewish day began at sundown. And the Bible definition of a day Let's see what the Bible describes as a day and a night. Go back to Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darks. All right, here's a definition of a day. You know what some people say? They say, Well, if he's just on there three hours, that counted as a day. Well, that sounds good, but let's see what the Bible definition of a day is. God called the light day. You know what God's definition of a day is? While it's light. When it's light, He calls it day, and the darkness, He called a night. So, a 24-hour day, a circle, consists of two periods. A light period and a dark period, right? According to God's definition in Genesis chapter 1... He said the evening and the morning were the first day, and a day is divided into two parts, day and night. To make a whole day and a night, there must be a light period and dark period. See, part of a light period could not be considered a whole day. Because for a whole day to come to pass, it has to be part light and part dark. Now, if, if a light period represents a day and a dark period represents a night, you could say this for Jonah chapter 1 verse 17, as, or, or Matthew twelve forty. You could say, as Jonas was three light periods and three dark periods in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three light periods and three dark periods in the heart of the earth. Everybody hear what I said? I said, if, if like right now, a dark, we're, we're in a dark period, and it'll be dark till in the morning. That's one dark period. All day long we had one light period. It takes a light period and a dark period to make an entire day and night. Now, if a light period's a day and a dark period's a night, you could say that Jesus was in the heart of the earth, what? Three light periods and three dark periods. Everybody have that? Nod your head. All right. Jesus had to be in the heart of the earth, three light periods and three dark periods. Now, I don't know if you realize what I've just done or not, but I've proved that He could not have been crucified on Friday and rose again on Saturday evening. There is no way in the world you can get three light periods and three dark periods from Friday evening to Saturday evening. It's just impossible. It cannot be done. So Jonah was three, day, three light periods and three dark periods in the, in the uh, whale's belly. Son of man, three light periods, three dark periods in the heart of the earth. A light period and a dark period is a day and a night. Has everybody got that? A light period and a dark period is a day and a night. If it's two days and two nights, it'd be light periods and two dark periods. Anybody that don't have that, raise your hand. Amen. What you need there, Brother George? <laughs> well, we ain't through yet. I just... No, no. He stayed on the cross six hours. But nine o'clock in the morning. No, no, it's 9 o'clock in the morning just like me and you would talk about 9 o'clock in the morning. Just like 9 tomorrow morning. And then he would die like 3 o'clock tomorrow evening. And he'd be buried like 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. We're talking about our time now. When I say 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm always talking about our time. If I'm talking about their time, I'll say the 6th hour or the 3rd hour or something like that. Yeah, when I say o'clock in the morning, I'm talking about our time. But when I say the sixth hour, I'm talking about their time.
<laughs> no, she was already there. I think Mary Magdalene was already there according to that last scripture I read. Mark. No, I didn't read none. Oh, I, don't think. I had Mark 16, 2, Luke 24, 1, and John 21. That was the first one. Mark 16, 2. No. Did it say very early in the morning on that first one? Okay, very early in the morning. That's Sunday morning. <laughs> That's Sunday morning because the sun's coming up. See? No. Saturday morning, Saturday evening is is beginning to the end of the Sabbath. If you could say Saturday evening is the end of the Sabbath. And see, they do it backwards. We say morning first and evening second, but they say evening first and morning second. You know, and said the evening and the morning were the first day. You understand that? Okay. Okay, Brother Ralph. Sometime after 6 o'clock on Saturday evening, right smack at 6 o'clock on Saturday evening. Yeah. No, no, no. He didn't rise. He rose at 6 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, is what I'm saying. He rose from the dead. Because that was the first day of the week. He come up on the first day of the week. He stayed in the grave. And we're going to see in just a few minutes how come it was important that he stay in the grave on that Sabbath day. You know what he done? He took the Sabbath days and nailed them to his cross. That we wouldn't be under the Sabbath day no more. And set us free from, you know. So he had to stay on the whole Sabbath. And right smack at six o'clock when it was still about a split second and it was the end of the Sabbath, the first day of the week, he rose, evidently. We might have to we might have to go on with this and everything. Then let anybody who wants to ask questions stay because we got quite a bit to get to here. And it's still early, but it's just now eight o'clock. But we're we'll, we're gonna I'm gonna try to give you the rest of this and then give you a chance to ask questions. All right, a Bible definition of a day. Now everybody, be quiet now. Bible definition of a day is a light period and a dark period. Two days would be two light periods and two dark periods. Three days would be three light periods, three dark periods. If it got up Saturday evening at 6 o'clock and he stayed in there three light periods and three dark periods, and if you want to find out how long a light period is, Jesus said in John 11, 9, are there no in a day? Remember that when he's talking about when uh, Lazarus had died? And Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? There's 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night, makes 24 hours. Now, uh, 11 something, John 11, 9. John 11, 9. Oh, I might as well put it down here. Can everybody see this? If there's 12 hours in a day and 12 hours in a night, and he stayed in there three days and three nights, how long is that? Three times twelve, three times twelve, seventy-two hours. Anybody got that? Three light periods of twelve hours each, three dark periods of twelve hours each, seventy-two hours he stayed in the tomb. Three days and three nights. Now, if he got up Saturday afternoon at six o'clock, he'd been in there seventy-two hours, somebody tell me when that made him buried. Right, somebody said it. Wednesday. How many of you ever heard that before? All right. Amen. Now we're getting where. He's buried Wednesday afternoon at 6 o'clock. He died Wednesday evening at 3 o'clock. He's crucified Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. So really, this right here that we're in tonight is good Wednesday. <laughs> That's right. There ain't no such thing as good Friday.
They're in, yeah, if you're a Catholic, you still have Good Friday this Friday, but we'll just make Good Wednesday out of it. Start a new uh, holiday. Okay? Any questions on this now? Okay. There's nowhere in the Bible, let me say this and we'll move on. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says a part of a day can be called a whole day and a night. Everybody got that? So to be a day and a night, it had to be a 12-hour day and a 12-hour night, 24 hours. If he's in there three days and three nights, it had to be 72 hours. If he got Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, it had to be put in there Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. Making Wednesday night, all day Thursday, Thursday night, all day Friday, Friday night, all day Saturday. That's three days and three nights. Total of 72 hours. And he got up right on the split second. Anybody don't understand that? All right. Now, let's study the second part of this message. The first part the Good Friday. The second part will be called the Wednesday Crucifixion. Yeah. Yeah, John 11, 9 is on the bottom of that right there. I didn't put it. No. No, I've, I believe define what a day is. That's what I was trying to do. Define what a day and a night is. B, the Wednesday crucifixion. No. 36. And 3 times 12 is 36. 3 times 3 light periods is 36. 3 times dark periods is 36. 36 plus 36 is 72 hours. Jonah was in the belly of the fish exactly 72 hours. So Jesus in the heart of the earth exactly 72 hours. 3 days and 3 nights. So he had to be crucified on Wednesday afternoon and buried Wednesday evening about 6 o'clock. He spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth and uh, got up Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. Now that's... Uh, I, I, I've heard... There's some common days that say he's crucified on Thursday and try to squeeze it in. Most of them say he's crucified on Friday and really squeeze it. And a few say that he was crucified on Wednesday and give him whole three days and three nights. Now, somebody's going to ask this question. Why the error? Why is it so popular to believe that it had to be crucified on Friday. Why there? I run smack dab into this era, or the reason for the era, as I begin to study. The era comes from looking at a verse of Scripture wrong in Mark chapter 15. There's something that'll throw you if you don't watch it. Everybody turn to Mark 15. Mark 15. Mark 15, verse 42 is where the trouble starts. And now, this is when he'd done crucified and everything and died. He just died back there in verse 37. The hill of the temple was rent in verse 38. They said this was the Son of God in verse 39. And they stood off and wept in 39 and 40, 41. Verse 42. And now when the even was come, because it was a preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable man, 
waited for the kingdom of God, went in and craved the body of Jesus. There's where the trouble comes from. You are looking at me like, how are you going to get out of that? <laughs> well, when you're an independent Baptist, there's always some way around the Scripture. <laughs> We've learned that real good. Uh, it says here that he died, and that evening came, and it was the day before the Sabbath. Now, we got a real problem here. Because Sabbath don't start to Friday evening at 6 o'clock. And if it's the day before the Sabbath, what day would that have to be? Friday morning. Because the day, the day before the Sabbath... See, the Sabbath starts at Friday evening at 6 o'clock. And they said it was the evening just before the Sabbath. So that would put it on what day? Friday. So understand what I said? When does the Sabbath start? Friday evening at 6 o'clock. And it says as evening came on, that evening would be the Sabbath. And this he was crucified on the day before the Sabbath, which would be Friday. That's where he was crucified on Friday came from. Mark 15, verse 42. The day before the Sabbath. Here, the Bible says that the day following the death of Jesus Christ was the Sabbath. The day after he died was the Sabbath. Now, is everybody all confused? That's what I thought. Here's the way you do it. <laughs> this is really, this is right. This is the way it really is. And you'll see in just a minute. The question, the thing that you've got to understand is, it does not say which Sabbath. The day before the Sabbath but it don't say which Sabbath. Now here's a common mistake. Most people believe that there was only one Sabbath and it came once a week, the seventh day of the week. What they don't realize is Israel had many Sabbaths. They had many Sabbaths. Alright, let's look at this in the Word of God. In Leviticus chapter 23, you got seven different Sabbaths mentioned. Now, the Sabbath was a day of rest, and they had many of them. You got the Feast of the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of the First Fruits, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles. And each one of these was a Sabbath of rest. The Lord told them not to do any work on that day, and it was a Sabbath just like the seventh day Sabbath was. Look at Leviticus chapter 23 right quick. Now, we'll be spending just a few minutes in the book of Leviticus before we, before we move on. Every Christian needs to get this down here. Leviticus 23. Here's the feast in Leviticus 23. And let's look at verse 32 if you would. What I'm trying to do now is show you that these feast days were all called also Sabbaths, just like the seventh day was a Sabbath. Now, if you can do that, our problem is solved. Just about. Verse 32. It shall be, that's the, the feast day they had this feast on, it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, even from even to even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Now, everybody hear what that said? The ninth day of the month. Every year, on the ninth day of the month, they were to celebrate a special Sabbath. Now, what if that day came on Tuesday? The Lord still called it a Sabbath, didn't He? If the ninth day of the month come on Saturday, He said, there's your Sabbath. If the ninth day of the month come on Monday, He said, it shall be a Sabbath. And whatever the day the ninth day of the month falls on, the ninth day from evening to the next evening will be a Sabbath of rest. So if you see from me Scriptures that the Lord don't just call a Sabbath just the seventh day of the week. Sometimes they had Sabbath on, they had a Sabbath on Saturday and they'd turn right around and have another on Monday. Because if it fell on one of these feast days, they might have two or three in the same week. I mean, people nowadays fuss and rire and get mad because the plants won't run on Sunday. Back then, brother, they might close Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and they might have... 
three or two in the same week. Do nothing. Nobody could work and hit a lick. Had to, had to rest to the Lord. Now look at verse 39 of the same chapter. Leviticus 23, 39. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, this fifteenth day of the seventh month, and their month started in April. It's April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Fifteenth day of October, squirrel season shall start. Now it says, When you have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Here he tells them that on the 15th day of October, it don't matter if it's Tuesday or what, it'll be a Sabbath. And then eight days later, they'll have another Sabbath. Seven days feast. Everybody understand that? Nod your head. Amen. All right. So there, there, there's more than just a Sabbath day. Now, are you beginning to see what I'm beginning to get at? All right. Let's go on. The Sabbath day, or the Sabbath following the crucifixion, listen, the Bible says that Jesus was crucified the day before the Sabbath, right? But we learn from studying the Bible that the, the Sabbath that He was crucified before was the Sabbath of the Passover. It was a Passover Sabbath. It was not the seventh day Sabbath, which would have made it uh, Friday evening and Saturday evening. Where you get that from, Brother Danny? From John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Everybody turn your Bible to John chapter 19. Now we learn from Mark that he's crucified the day before the Sabbath, right? Now let's see what Sabbath they're talking about. John chapter 19. It was a special Sabbath. It was a special day. John chapter 19. And let's look at, at verse 14. Where he's crucified. John nineteen fourteen, And it was the preparation of the Passover. Everybody see that? It was the preparation of the Passover. It was a Passover Sabbath. About the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews... Behold your king. Now, let's look at verse 31. Well, I'll be. Isn't that a blessing? I didn't even have verse 14 marked, and I just went right to it. Verse 31, John chapter 19, verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Stop right there. They think, uh-oh, they can't leave these bodies on there on Friday evening, Saturday evening, because it's, it's a Sabbath. No, that's not what he's talking about. For that Sabbath day was a high day. Everybody see that? That was a special Sabbath day. It wouldn't have said that if it had been just a normal Sabbath day, just like every other Sabbath day said that Sabbath day was a high day. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, they should be taken away. Does anybody know what day the Feast of Passover was on? 14. Well, they, they, they killed him. The Passover, and, you know, it was Feast of Passover on the 14th day of the month. You get that from, uh, what did you say? And I got a, uh, Leviticus 23.5 too. The 14th day of the first month. 14th day of April. Which is, where are we now? What's this? 15th. It was yesterday. We're close to it this year. No kidding. But uh, the 14th day of April is Passover. 14th day of the first month. Their first month is April. Now, if this was a Passover Sabbath, that day was a high day. Do y'all realize tonight that the most important, the highest day on the Jewish calendar is the day of the Passover. It is the highest day on their calendar. The Lord said, this is a month that I brought you out of Egypt. You'll observe it as long as your generations shall last. And the highest day on a Jew's calendar is that Sabbath of that Passover. The 14th day of the first month. So, 
You see that Jesus was crucified the day before the Sabbath, but that Sabbath didn't have to be a Saturday Sabbath. So when was it? If He was crucified, if He got up Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, and He'd been in there 72 hours, He had to be crucified on Wednesday evening. Now look at this. I'll, I'll try to draw this. I don't know if I can do it right or not, but let's just say this is the week. This is the last week. Here's Sunday, first day of the week. Here's Saturday, Sabbath. Here's Friday. Here's Thursday. Here's Wednesday, and here's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is the day that he cursed the fig tree, Monday. This is the day that he came back and saw it withered away, Tuesday. This is the day that they got him Wednesday morning and hauled him away, kept him up all night Tuesday night, scourged him, made fun of him, put the crown of thorns on his head, mocked him, gave him a false trial. They crucified him at 9 o'clock. He died at 3 o'clock. He was buried at 6 o'clock. Now, you remember... Six o'clock on Wednesday evening, what starts? Thursday. Thursday starts at six o'clock on Wednesday evening. And it lasts till Thursday evening. All of this, all of this, say this color, Thursday. All that's Thursday. And then all of this, say this color, is Friday. And then all of the, the blank there is Saturday. You understand that? This, let me see here. This is Wednesday from here to here. This is Thursday from here to here. This is Friday. And this is Saturday. And there starts Sunday. From there to there. All of this is Sunday. There's the way the Jewish days look. He was crucified here at 9 o'clock, stayed on the cross six hours, died, darkness fell on the land. He was put in a tomb at 6 o'clock. Everybody got that? 6 o'clock, one night, one day. Two nights, two days. Three nights, three days. And got out here. And early in the morning, the next morning when the sun came up, there's when they came to the tomb, and the stone was rolled away, you know, and it was empty. And he was gone. Now, where was I over here just a second ago? All right. Now, if he was crucified the day before the Passover, and the Passover was the 14th day of the month. Here's the 14th. In Leviticus chapter 23, it tells you that the very next day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's Friday. Unleavened bread. That's the 15th day of the first month. And that's found in Leviticus 23, 5 and 23, 6. Leviticus 23, 5 and 23, 6. If you want to write it down and study it when you get home. The very next day, the 14th is the Passover. The 15th is the unleavened bread. And this, of course, here would be the regular Sabbath, the seventh day. Now, you know what you see here? The week that Jesus died, there were three Sabbaths. Everybody see that? Nod your head. You understand what I said? The week that Jesus died, there were three Sabbaths. The Passover, the 14th, the unleavened bread, the 15th, and the very next day happened to fall on Saturday, which was a regular Sabbath. Now, he was crucified the day before the Passover. It put him in the ground on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. He said in there three days, three nights, got up 6 o'clock Saturday evening, and everything just worked perfect like that. Just to the T, and you don't have to twist. No Scripture. You don't have to make take a verse here and twist it around and make part of a day a part of a night and try to lie out of it. You can you just let it say what it says, and it works out perfect. Now, here's your goodie. You can see the Lord's providential work, and 
and hand in this. You know how come? You ever seen God's hand in this thing like this? Uh, like anything, in anything like this before? Do you realize that Jesus come right smack dab the very year He's supposed to come in? According to Daniel, 70th week. And if Jesus would have come the year before that and been crucified, or a year before that in His ministry been crucified, it wouldn't have worked out like that. These Sabbaths would have been up here somewhere and it would have been two more days before the Sabbath. If Jesus would have come a year later and died, it wouldn't have worked out like that. One of these Sabbaths would have been here and the other one might have been here. The year that Jesus died, there was he, the whole time He was in the grave, it was three high Sabbath days. He stayed in the grave for three Sabbath days. You know what that shows? Shows the hand of God. He died right on t- schedule. They didn't take his life. He laid it down. A cell. Guy told me one time the Lord didn't know he was going to be crucified, and his plans just went sour and everything. And uh, he really come here to take over the world and everything. But he didn't know, you know, that they was going to get him and crucify him. But son, this just worked out just to the T here. The Lord knew. He stayed in that tomb three days, three nights, 72 hours. Got up the third uh, after three days and three nights, waving the keys of hell and the devil's face. And the Bible says, triumph over them, making a show of them openly, and triumph over the powers of the evil one. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2 in closing. Daniel 70th week. Huh. No, I, I, I just thought of that. Daniel's 70th week puts him dying on this year, though, at this month. You know, y'all probably studied that in Sunday school. Except Daniel 70 weeks. We'll get to that some other time. That's a whole other... Look at Colossians chapter 2 over in the New Testament as we close. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Let's read this. You know what he done when he died on the cross? Let's look at verse 14. Blotted out, brother. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Keeping certain days and all these feast days. And it was just contrary to us, and the Lord blotted it out. And you know what he done? He nailed it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Now that shows you there's another verse where there's more than one Sabbath day. If it had been one, it would just said the Sabbath day. The Sabbath days, all of those Sabbath days that they kept, which are a shadow of things to come. I used to think that verse said, which were a shadow of things to come, but it says, which are a shadow of things to come. The Lord still got plans for that Old Testament, all those old feast days. But the body is of Christ. You know what that means? Brother, the Lord went in there in the old grave, and He went down there, And he conquered death. He conquered the grave. He went down through paradise. Told those saints, let's go. I'm here. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all them got up and appeared unto many. Somebody said, Mama, Abraham's in town. Abraham, come back. And it said they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And and after his resurrection, he made a sweep down through... uh, you know, paradise, got the keys. I don't know what all he done while he was down there. Three days and three nights. He told the thief, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And he went down there and he preached a, a sermon and didn't even have to give no invitation. They all said, let's go. Ready to go? And thank God on the f- first day of the week, he got up and he lives forever tonight. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand for a word of prayer. All every head is bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to ask you to search your heart tonight. There may be someone here that maybe you realize 
the Lord's Word is perfect and you realize there's no flaws in it. And I know there's a lot of of these Scriptures that I I really can't understand. And I don't claim to understand them. But I, I do understand enough to make me fear God. I understand enough to know that man couldn't have wrote this book. And there may be someone here tonight that maybe you your life just ain't what it ought to be. You'd like to just raise that hand and say, Brother Danny, I need your prayers and the prayers of the church. I'm having problems. I need victory. I need your prayers tonight. Would you just slip your hand? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hands all over the room gone up tonight. God bless you, brother. Amen. God bless you. Someone else say, remember me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, girls. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. 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 Our Father, God, as we come before you right now, Lord, we realize, Lord, that you make no mistakes. We realize your son came right on schedule. We know he wasn't a minute early. He wasn't a minute late. He died on time. He rose again on time. Lord, we know he's coming back on time. Oh, God, I pray we're ready to meet him. Help us to live our life now the way we wished we'd lived them one day when we see you face to face. I pray for these brothers and sisters, every one, Lord. Take it to heart. Lord, I understand your word. Never try to question it, Lord, but even if we can't understand it, just believe it anyway. God, I ask you, Lord, for these that are having problems with, with sin, Lord, and maybe overcoming it in victory, Lord, I know, God, we all do that. And God, I pray you'd help us and give us grace, Lord. God, it grieves our hearts, Lord, when we sin, and Lord, I know it grieves your heart. We pray you'll have mercy on us tonight. Wash us in the blood of Jesus, Lord, that we may be clean and holy and pure and right in your sight. Have your way. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Help us to learn it, love it, and live it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're at liberty to go. John R. Ryan.